Hello everyone, welcome to the Tech and Auto Show. I'm your host Manav Sinha and it is so good to see all you lovely people once again. This is that one show which satisfies your hunger for both technology and automobiles at one place. There's a lot of content to be covered in this episode. So without any further ado, let's start off by showing you a glimpse of what's coming away in the next half an hour. This week, we go to London to see the tech from the future. Go for a drive in the MG Hector. Ride new scooters from the House of Hero and play some cricket on our smartphones. So yes, all of that action is coming your way and yes, the amazing Jaguar XJ50 is giving us company for this episode but we're going to kick off the show all the way from London where the biggest ever London Tech Week has taken place and it included everything from the likes of artificial intelligence to 5G and we also saw a design studio that Infosys will be using in the future. So let's head on over to Vishal to find out more. We are here in the British summer of 2019, as you can probably see with the bright sunlight around me. This summer is about two serious things, cricket and technology. Cricket can be on one side for a moment. Behind me is one of the venues for the London Tech Week. The 2019 edition of the London Tech Week is the largest there has ever been. The usual themes, artificial intelligence, 5G mobile networks, augmented reality, data security, and a lot more. Artificial intelligence was definitely in vogue at the London Tech Week. British technology company Consequential Robotics showed off the third generation of its Miro smart robot. This cute pet is now primed for not just being cute and making you want to cuddle it, but also for educational collaboration in classrooms. Studying was never this much fun when we were going to school, was it? Then there was Microsoft, which wants to offload the very hectic activity of choosing an ice cream the next time you want to eat one to artificial intelligence. Microsoft says that they use the Emotion Recognition API from the Azure Cognitive Services. The way this works is that you walk up to an ice cream kiosk and let the cameras installed there detect your face. Microsoft will then show you a bunch of images, including that of a tree and a nice beach somewhere and will capture your reactions based on that. It will then calculate your age, your gender and your mood to make a suggestion for the ice cream you should buy. How about a virtual reality headset that is connected to a computer which is strapped to your back? That is exactly what tech company HP have done and the device has a name which leaves no ambiguity. It's called the HP VR Backpack. When you're at your home or in an office, you can simply dock this and use it as a desktop computer. One of the biggest announcements at this year's London Tech Week has to be the new design studio, which Infosys will be using in great detail. In fact, it's not just any other design studio that you can think of. This one relies heavily on artificial intelligence. Infosys has opened its new experience design and innovation studio in Shoreditch, London. The aim is to use this real estate with 20,000 feet of space to design new solutions which take advantage of the latest technology and the flexibility that is offered by artificial intelligence, augmented reality, virtual reality, Internet of Things and 5G mobile networks. This is the seventh design studio that Infosys has started, including the ones in New York, Los Angeles, Berlin, Melbourne and closer to home in Bengaluru and Pune. My belief is that Indian government is so fresh right now with Modi appointing a new cabinet uh, and also UK government is forming a newer government uh, as well. I think this is real opportunity for us to learn from last five years and build a partnership for the next five years. So I would say from an economic perspective, this is an amazing opportunity. It is expected that the new design studio in Shoreditch will have as many as 250 employees. On the sidelines of the London Tech Week, we sat down with Mr. Graham Stewart, UK's Minister for Investment, and talked about what Brexit means for companies investing in the UK, how the India and the UK tech partnership is going to proceed, and how the two countries can use technology to solve a lot of problems around infrastructure and largely the society as well. Well, we see India is the fastest growing major economy in the world. Prime Minister Modi, um, I congratulate on his recent re-election victory and there's a real determination, I know, talking to uh, uh, Indians in the last few days to put together the first 100-day plan and the Prime Minister's determined to see progress. 
Well, there's no sign of it having any impact. Um, uh, if, uh, if you heard of the investments from India just keep going up. And I think if you look at technology in particular, um, the UK, if anything, is expanding its lead as the European tech centre. British Telecom operator 3 UK has confirmed that they will be rolling out 5G networks in the country later this year. The interesting bit is, they will be partnering with Huawei for the 5G network rollout. Then there is a small matter of what UK tech companies are doing in India. Buffalo Grid, for instance, is offering a rather unique product that allows internet connectivity for users in regions of India where a mobile network may otherwise not be available. And this can charge your phone too thanks to the massive batteries that get charged using the sun. Now who doesn't like a luxury car? Well, I certainly do, especially if it enables you to do a lot more things inside the car. Now if we have to talk about such a car, we have to talk about the MG Hector, which has made all kinds of right noises this year. And after a long time of being teased, Finally, Arjit Garg has got his hands on the car and here's how it is to drive. When MG Motor, the 90-year-old British brand, announced their entry in India, a lot of people laughed them off and there's a reason to it. It's not easy for any car manufacturer to establish their base in India. But then, MG had some huge plans for their first product, as they decided to put everything, all the technology, in their first car for India, the Hector. But is technology alone enough to sell a car in India, as most of the people look for actual physical product? And this is what we will be talking in the next few minutes. The very first moment you lay your eye on the MG Hector, you realize how big this SUV is. The sheer size of the MG Hector gives it a very unique road presence, especially from the front. Like most of the modern SUVs, the Hector gets a high-place horizontal LED DRLs sitting above a hexagonal chrome enclosed grille. Then there is the big headlight cluster enclosed in a C-section chrome lining comprising the LED projector headlamps and fog lights. The site has an equally eye-catching appeal with a floating roof, a large wheelbase and 17-inch dual-tone alloys. While on paper the size of the tyre is enough, the large wheel arches and the mammoth size makes the wheels feel small. There's ample use of chrome elements too. At the back are the LED tail lights that gets a connected look thanks to a large horizontal reflector, dynamic indicators that look super cool and a large brushed aluminium finished skid plate. While the design of the back is unique, we wish it could have been a bit wider to give it an appeal and match the front and side. Overall, the MG Hector has an eye-catching design. Yes, the exteriors are exciting and all, but the real USP of the Hector lies inside the cabin. MG is calling the Hector India's first internet car. Fancy names aside, the MG Hector is a connected car that gets an embedded SIM from Airtel. The highlight of the MG Hector is definitely this large touchscreen infotainment system here that not only looks good but acts functional also. You can actually control more than 100 functions using voice command. Let me show you a couple of them. I'm listening. Open the sunroof. There you go. Let me show you another. Set temperature to 27 degrees. Temperature is set to 27 degrees Celsius. MG has partnered with many technology companies to provide various connectivity solutions with the iSmart technology. Apps like Ghana for listening your favorite music, TomTom Tom for navigation, and AccuWeather for weather updates are pre-installed. You can also use the iSmart app on your mobile to remotely control functions on your car. Companies like Microsoft, Adobe, Nuance, Cisco were roped in to provide a variety of technology features to the buyers. That being said, the infotainment system is also very intuitive to operate and is the largest of its kind with a 10.4-inch screen size. The sound quality is brilliant thanks to the Infinity Sound System. In terms of the features, the MG Hector is loaded to the brim with features like tire pressure monitoring system, power tailgate, electronically adjustable front seats, panoramic sunroof, ambient lighting, 360 view camera and more. 
Now to address the elephant in the room. No, the build quality is not bad. In fact, it is very good thanks to soft touch leather on the dashboard, chunky steering wheel and leather seats with good cushioning and bolstering. The doors are also on the heavier side. We found the seats to be a bit stiff though. The all black cabin is spacious as your living room, especially in the rear seats. Also, the rear footboard is fully flat with no transmission tunnel hump. The rear seats can be reclined and also flat folded to generate extra space in the boot which is otherwise deep, square and easy to load. Now the MG is offering the Hector with 3 engine options, a 1.5 liter petrol, a 1.5 liter petrol with a 48 volt hybrid and a 2 liter diesel engine. We drove both the petrol hybrid and diesel motors but only with the 6 speed manual gearbox. However, there's also a CVT on offer. In terms of the numbers, the 1.5 petrol and petrol hybrid delivers 143 PS and 250 Nm of output, while the 2 litre delivers 150 PS and 350 Nm of output. The 48 volt hybrid system pushes an extra 20% torque in the petrol motor. Both the engines perform really well and the gear shifts are also smooth. We found the diesel unit to be best suited for our test drive which comprised mostly of hilly terrain. Which brings us to the handling. Since we drove the Hector mostly on the hills, the hairpin bends gave us an ample opportunity to test the steering response and we were impressed to say the least. The steering had a good feedback and felt aptly tuned for India and so was the suspension which makes the ride quality plush and on a softer side. The car also has supreme NVH levels, especially in the petrol motor. There was a clutter in the diesel motor though. The MG Hector also get a host of virtual safety features thanks to the iSmart system like a dedicated call center for emergency assistance which the MG calls a Pulse Hub, Geofence among others. More safety features include electronic stability program, hill hold, 6 airbags, TCS and ABS with EDD. Now MG has got everything in place to make the Hector a success in India. A strong brand name, a spacious SUV, a technology loaded cabin and an infrastructure in place with almost 100 plus outlets. The only thing remaining is now the price which can be the make or break deal for the MG Hector. For now, we are happy with the honest effort that MG has put into the Hector. So the Cricket World Cup is going on right now and the cricket fever is high amongst all of us, isn't it? But what if you couldn't get enough of cricket and wanted to have this experience on your phone too? Well, our in-house gaming champion Shovik has figured out some of the best ways to have that experience on your smartphone. Check it out. Cricket frenzy has reached a fever pitch in India and debates are on at every corner about how well would India play, whether it's got its team selection right and how well would Mahindra Singh Dhoni play in his last World Cup. On this note, here's looking at our favourite cricket games on Android. Gully Cricket Game on Android made it to this list by virtue of pure nostalgia. It is not the best in terms of playability in this list, but makes up for it with quirky animations and the bizarre Gully Cricket rules, where you can be ruled out if someone catches the ball even after it has bounced on the ground. The slightly tedious bit about this is that you will have to patiently play through and collect coins until you can upgrade your bat. And it is a bit too difficult to hit sixes with a standard piece of bat. That though is what makes it more realistic going by how gully cricket goes. Real Cricket 2019 The best part of Real Cricket is its realistic graphics and licensed player names. Real Cricket offers you all the international teams which you can simulate in 10, 20 and 50 over formats. There is a whole lot of flexibility since the game comes with licensed grounds and a lot of gameplay strokes. The graphics are super realistic and the controls are easy to master. For beginners, we recommend you start from the very easy level which is also what casual players will like. While player forms are not reflected, the overall ability of every player in each team is fairly up to date with the latest cricketing rosters. You can also play in tournament and career modes to collect trophies and if you're not in the mood for it, you can simply play quick matches which is what we most often did. Simply put, this is one of the best cricket games on phone, be it for the game mechanics, the graphics 
or just the overall level of immersion in each game. Stick Cricket We are all fans of stick games and stick cricket is no stranger to such fandom. The animations are funny, the overall layout is quirky and while you cannot bowl in this game, batting itself gets incrementally tougher as you reach the finals of each tournament. The timing of batting is what this game is all about and reverse swing is devilishly difficult to play. Expect targets that range up to 25 runs per over in the final games and while that is difficult, this is what makes the game so addictive as you keep chasing the elusive trophies. World Cricket Championship 2 WCC 2 is the one game where bowling is actually easier than batting. Given the style of controls, getting the bat timing correct is quite difficult, while bowling feels more intuitive with pitching the ball being quite easy. You can play tournaments, test matches, player-on-player -player matches, multiplayer games and every form of cricket that you can wish for, although the only quirk here is that there are no licensed players or cricket ground names. Nevertheless, the graphics are among the most realistic and it even comes with a realistic decision reviewal system where if the umpire doesn't declare the batsman out if you're bowling, you can choose Ultra Edge or Hotspot to contest the umpire's decision. In our experience, it works more often than not, even when you feel that the batsman didn't edge the ball. However, casual gamers might find this game a bit too tedious to play, although hardcore cricket fans will love how realistic WCC2 is. If you're a cricket fanatic in India, then these five games are something that you just can't do without. From bashing unrealistic T20 scores to even taking on your friends one on one, these are the best games that you can play and these can actually be the life of a party. The best part? All of these five are available for free on Android. Now scooters are really important for any mass market two-wheeler manufacturer in India and Hero knows that very well. Yes, they've been launching new motorcycles one after the other, but scooters too are getting a refresh as they've come out with not one but two new scooters in the form of the new Pleasure and the new Maestro. So should you be considering them before making your purchase? Well, Abhinav Jagar is answering that question for you. Now, Hero have been on quite a launch spree recently. The company launched the X-Pulse 200, the 200T and the Xtreme 200S in India. Seems now Hero have decided to upgrade two of its offerings in the scooter segment as well, namely the Pleasure Plus 110 and the Maestro Edge 125. And we're here to ride both scooters to find out how much they've changed and more importantly, are they worth your consideration? Let's find out. Let's start off with the Maestro Edge 125. The Maestro moniker already exists in the brand's portfolio, but Hero decided to add the 124.6cc engine, which is also present on the Hero Destiny 125, to the Maestro Edge 125. The Maestro Edge is Hero Motorcorp's most expensive scooter in the Indian market, and the homegrown brand has equipped it with an impressive array of features. But before we get to the features, let's first talk about the 125cc engine. The biggest highlight comes with the FI badge. Yes, the Maestro Edge 125 is the only scooter in India to get fuel injection. The engine on the Maestro Edge 125 produces 9.1 bhp at 7000 rpm and has a peak torque of 10.2 nm at 5000 rpm. On the go, thanks to the fuel injection unit, the Maestro Edge 125 has a linear and smooth power delivery right up to the 60-70 km hour mark. There's also a feeling of power on tap, but not the kind that'll give you an instant kick, but instead a sophisticated reserve of power. That being said, after 70 km an hour, the Maestro Edge does start to get a little uncomfortable as far as performance is concerned. Handling is predictable, but given the fact that the Maestro is engineered more towards sedate and a calmer style of riding, it's not really an ultra agile machine. This is also due to the fact that the curb weight is almost 110 kg, which is a little on the heavier side. In the braking department, the Maestro Edge is impressive thanks to the 190mm disc brake at the front. However, we did feel that they could do with a little more bite. The ride comfort is excellent and is one area where the Maestro does truly have an edge. 
The comfort in the ride is also due to the fact that the Maestro gets a telescopic front suspension. When it comes to looks, the Maestro Edge 125 does have quite a few design elements which look unique and tasteful. For starters, the Maestro gets two funky color options, a panther black and a pearl fadeless white color. What's interesting is the fact that the seat color is carried over to the floor and the inside front panel of the scooter. Overall, the Maestro Edge is bound to grab some attention on the roads. However, there was a slight panel gap right above the instrument cluster which does look a little untidy, especially because it'll catch one's gaze more often than not. Other Keisha comforts on the Maestro Edge 125 include an external fuel filling cap, mobile charging port, a boot lamp, remote key opening, a side stand indicator, a service due reminder and a digital analog meter. It also gets a very futuristic looking lightning insignia which fits in really well with the design. The Maestro Edge also comes with the i3s carb variant that comes with a 125cc energy boost engine which produces 8.7 bhp and 10.2 nm of torque. It also features Hero's intuitive i3s idle stop start system for a higher fuel efficiency. Let's now move our attention to the Hero Pleasure Plus 110. Like the Maestro, the Pleasure already exists in the brand's portfolio. Hero Motor Corp have now added a 110cc engine which also performs duties on other Hero scooters. The engine produces 8 bhp of power at 7500 rpm and a peak torque of 8.7 nm at 5500 rpm. Once you're on the move, the first thing which is immediately apparent in comparison with the Maestro Edge is the slightly more aggressive riding posture. The Pleasure Plus instantly feels more maneuverable and also compact in its size. The power delivery is ample, but after 50 to 60 km an hour, the Pleasure Plus does start to feel a bit strained. Braking is adequate at best, and getting the Pleasure Plus to stop can be a little nerve wracking at times. However, it does have a little more bite compared to the Maestro Edge, thanks to its 101 kg curb weight. The Pleasure Plus also does a good job in terms of ride comfort, but does feel a bit jerky when there is a long stretch of uneven road surface. However, when it comes to handling, the Pleasure Plus feels light and nimble on the road. When it comes to looks, the Pleasure Plus will be turning quite a few heads thanks to its good mix of design elements. It balances just the right amount of retro and modern at the same time. The silver panels between the indicator lights and the back side panels look well integrated into the design. The black alloy wheels also do a good job at alleviating the stance of the Pleasure Plus. The Pleasure Plus also comes loaded with features like a USB charger located accessibly close to the front pocket, an LED boot lamp, integrated braking system and a new backlit speedometer with fuel and side stand indicator. The Pleasure Plus also gets 7 color options which is quite a wide range to choose from. Now, After having ridden both scooters, it's easy to see that Hero have put in a significant amount of effort to upgrade both the Pleasure Plus 110 and the Maestro Edge 125 not only in terms of features, but also in terms of performance. So, if you're out in the market looking for either a 110cc or a 125cc scooter, these two should definitely pique your interest. And with that, we've come to the end of this edition of the Tech and Auto Show. How did you find the show? Is there anything you have to say, anything you want us to cover, or you simply want to have a conversation? Well, hit us up on Twitter, we're ready to talk. If it's about technology, you can tweet out to us at News18 Tech. If it's about automobiles, reach out to us at News18 Auto. And remember, by logging on to News18.com, you can read up more on the Jaguar XA50. Well, I'm going to head out for a drive, but I'll be right here next week, same time, only on CNN News18.